Um, well, good afternoon to everybody, and I, I am especially thankful today for uh, all of you joining us with, for our Lunch and Learn speaker series. And this month we are honoring human rights and equality. And we have a very special panel of guests to celebrate Pride Month. We're all donned in our t-shirts and our wristbands. And, you know, unfortunately, there's not going to be a parade this month, but it's my understanding that down the road a piece, there is going to be the Pride Parade. Is that correct? Anybody? Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, great, yeah. great, great, great. Yeah. So um, we will be participating as we always do in the Pride Parade. Um, we'll have our t-shirts on and our employees that want to participate will be engaged and involved with that. You know, uh, Pride Month is, is a, a time to celebrate, but it's also a time to remember. Um, it's a time to recall the struggles that LGBTQ and com communities have endured in our nation and to continue fight for full equality. Now, this Pride Month, we recognize the many valued uh, contributions of the individuals in, in the community. And today we renew our commitment to stand in solidarity against injustice and discrimination. Pride is a community celebration, but it's also a celebration of individual dignity and achievement. And our panelists today have a lot of achievements to celebrate. Let me give you a real short introduction of each of them, and then we'll begin our discussion. State Representative Lamont Harris Jr. is a friend of mine and an accomplished insurance executive in the Chicago area. He serves as a professor with City Colleges of Chicago, and he's the first openly gay African American LGBTQ individual to serve in the Illinois legislature. Welcome, Lamont. Wave at us, Lamont. <laughs> Judge Jill Rose Quinn was elected a Cook County Circuit Court judge in 2020. She is the first openly transgendered Circuit Court judge in Illinois. Her perspective as a member of the transgender community and as a sole practitioner in the legal profession brings a unique and welcome dimension to the Cook County bench. Welcome, Judge Quinn. Cook County Water Reclamation District Commissioner Marcelino Garcia is an attorney with expertise in local and international governments, health care, and community affairs. He was elected by his peers as water reclamation as the chairman of finance, making him yep. the first. He's a first <laughs> openly gay officer to, to uh, lead MWRD. Well, Marcelino. <laughs> Rocco Claps is currently the Deputy Director of the Illinois Secretary of State's Office. He has a distinguished history of service in local, state, and federal government, including serving as Director of the Illinois Department of Human Rights, where he was a staunch advocate for LGBT Q, rights and equality. And I actually got a chance to work very closely with him in Springfield, and we got some really great legislation passed during the 12 years I served there. We Hello, did, and that's why anytime you ask me to do anything, I'm going to be Because oh, <laughs> you are a true partner, so you're the best. I'll never forget that. You're the best. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rocco. Now, I, I want to start um, our discussion today by reading a quote from Judge Quinn that actually appeared in the Chicago Tribune shortly after she was elected the county's first ever transgender judge. She was asked to describe the importance of her victory, and this is what she said. It's a win for inclusion. It's a win for all the kids in the world who were bullied, felt like they did not fit in, who don't think anybody will ever accept them. I can be a beacon for those children. Just like I stand on the shoulders of the people that have gone before me, these kids can stand on my shoulders and I am willing to support them and hold them up when it's their turn. Their turn, sorry, end of quote. Wow. Judge Quinn, I, I thought this was a, a really great quote because it's so heartfelt and it sums up so very much 
So let me ask each of you to react to that sentiment and tell us how it relates to your own personal story. Who wants to go first? Well, you know what, uh, Judge Quinn, since I quoted you, um, why don't you tell me? I, you, you, that's your quote. You're famous. <laughs> you know, everybody's famous for 15 minutes in the future, according to, to Andy Warhol. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I really, when I, when I ran, uh, before I ran, I thought no one will ever elect a transgender judge. And I flipped that around and I said to myself, they have to elect a transgender judge because the, the, the judiciary and, and government needs to have everybody included in order to be legitimate. And, when I, and, and that's, that's the importance of diversity and that's the importance of inclusion. We all have to be able, we all have to share in, in every, every walk of life, in government, in, in education, in manufacturing, commerce, in industry, in law enforcement, everywhere. And that's, that's what I meant by that. That's one of the things I meant by that quote. And um, I wanted to, as I said, uh, I, I want everybody who's in that position of, you know, you know growing up and, and thinking that, uh, that high school is never going to end, you know, uh, thinking that that the bad times are never going to end. I wanted them to know that that if you're honest with yourselves, if you're honest with everybody else, if you're out and proud, then people are going to respect you and you're going to find success and you're going to find love. Great. Hey, thanks. Thanks. Marcelino, why don't you tell us how 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 do you feel about that? How 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 has your life changed and um, what do you think? What do you think about her quote? I think this quote is spot on. It's like I can look back at my own story. When I started working in government over 20 years ago, there were really not that many people out. Um, and it was a different time. I think I think we knew who each other were, but you try to like keep it on the DL more or less, just because you were always afraid of being stigmatized or or maybe not getting those career advancements. I, I will have to say that after so many years, um, you know, I'm proud. I'm, I'm, I'm a first of many, a, a gay Latino. There's, there's, there's some of us out there, but not that many of us. And as, to, as society has evolved, it's like we need to be out there showing the kids that people like them can actually make it and that you can transform a world, that you don't have to hide who you are. Yes, it's there's hurdles, but you know the world is about hurdles, overcoming them and making society better. So I am, um, yeah, it's been a it's been a long road, um, which has been great, and I look to uh, I look towards the future to keep working with others to to keep improving the world. The work continues. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. The work continues. Rocco, what do you think? Well, I, you know, I feel like I'm kind of a dinosaur in a lot of ways because I, I started in, in public service in the late 80s working on House Democratic staff, and I was the only gay person I knew around, and, um, and that was the first workplace that I came out at, and it was uh, back in the 80s, and it is an entirely different world. Um, now, how far things have gone. I mean, I, at that point, we were fighting for hate crimes legislation. We weren't thinking about marriage or um, we weren't thinking about whether um, there was going to be domestic, even domestic partnership at that point. And so I just think in just in my lifetime, which is relatively short to me, at least, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. But I think uh, what the judge said is exactly right. We have to always remember that we're there on the, on the shoulders of somebody else and that life was markedly different from the days when they were raiding bars and oh. publishing people's names in newspapers to today when, you know, we have full marriage equality and all of the benefits that that we as a collectively as a group are able to enjoy as out people in the workplace. It's an amazing transition. It's an amazing time, but we can't forget that. And there's one thing I always thought of this when I was at the Department of Human Rights. One of the most important things to remember is if we as a community didn't have the 
um, the example of what the African American community um, did between the 1950s and today as a as a collectively as a group and showed us so many ways of how to stand up for ourselves, how to uh, be included, how to understand discrimination both in the legal sense but in the sort of um, in the in the not so obvious ways that that all of us have experienced. If we didn't have the example of of that community and the leaders uh, like Dr. King and Malcolm X in that community, I don't think a lot of us as communities would have gotten as far as we have. So I always made sense out of that as well. So um, that I, I think that's really important. Thank so you. Rocco, since you were in um, uh, state government, um, were you there when um, they passed civil unions? Were you at a director at that time? I was, yeah. There oh. were civil unions and there was, uh, and then as marriage. So, yes. I mean, for me to have gone from in the 1980s trying to convince people that it was not a good thing to bash someone in the head, you know, to uh, to almost, you know, basically full equality between the Human Rights Act changes that included LGBT and the, um, and the times when uh, and, and marriage equality, and of course, before that, um, uh, civil unions, it, it's been an amazing time. Um, yeah. You know, and then I also had the great experience of working at the White House when uh, Bill Clinton was president, and actually being there when he had the first official uh, Oval Office meeting with the LGBT community. And so it's like, I feel like I've witnessed so many amazing things in, in my short, I, it's a very short lifetime. I'm really not that old, you know? So, um, so but it is amazing. And it's a, it's a credit to this community that we have moved so uh, fast and furious, you know? It's, it's, it's an amazing thing. Thank you. Hey, yeah. Lamont. So um, a couple of your predecessors, um, well, before you got to the General Assembly, I remember Larry McKeon. Does everybody remember Larry? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. What a phenomenal person. I mean, Larry was salt of the earth. And, of course, he passed away some time ago. But I had an opportunity to work with him, to talk with him, to, I mean, he was just amazing, you know. And then Greg Harris came in. And, of course, Greg Harris is the bomb. He he, I, I told him before he even got appointed, you know, uh, when the speaker appointed him as the uh, majority leader in the House, I, I was uh, in Springfield and we were at a luncheon and I was asking him, I said, Greg, are you ready? And he said, what do you mean? I said, you're next. And he says, you know, I'm hearing that. I said, from my lips to your ears, you're the man. Okay. And he says, okay, I'll do it. You know, and I said, oh, I'm not the one carrying that. Well, I'm not doing that. So, so Lamont, you are the first openly gay African American male in the uh, Illinois House. Is that correct? You are muted, sir. That is correct, Madam Clerk. Wow. So, being first has you. It's a it's a lot of weight, isn't it? And since you and you and I are from the same African American co communities, that had to be um, kind of tough for you. So I'd like to hear your story as well. I just know how homophobic um, African Americans have been, you know, over the years, uh, and it took you know, people to step out and be bold like yourself to let people know that you know what it's okay. So what do you think, Lamont? What's Madam your story? Clark, Madam Clerk, first and foremost, um, <clears throat> let me thank you for your support of my candidacy. You were one of the first elected to support me. And very similar to Leader Harris, as I was running, I remember coming up to you and saying, you know, uh, I'm not for sure if I'm going to be supported by the Democratic Party. And I remember you saying to me, just like you told uh, Leader Harris, get ready, you're next. Yeah. And uh, you were right. And so uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for your mentorship and your friendship. Uh, it has been truly an honor uh, to work alongside of you. And thank you for all of the work that you've done for the LGBT community in your current role and your previous roles. And so kudos to you and thank you for allowing me to be on this esteemed panel. Uh, 
you know, you mentioned um, about our community. Uh, I teased the mayor because even before she was elected, I was the first uh, across the board, right? So city, state, county. Um, and so I always tease the mayor, but I, I was I was before her. But it was some, some concerns in uh, the 5th District, which I represent from South Shore along the lakefront all the way to Division of Lakeshore Drive, that the African-American community would not support me. But I'll tell you, when I went to the doors, uh, Madam Clerk, I talked about running a mentor program for African-American boys. I talked about being an educator at City College, as you mentioned, as a small business owner, uh, and taking those experiences to the General Assembly. And it never, ever came up uh, when I was walking the 5th District asking constituents for their support, and it has not come up since. Uh, but it's been an honor to be in the General Assembly and for kids to come up to me with their parents and say, thank you for being the first. Uh, you know, we certainly have Kelly Cassidy and Sam Yingling and, and Greg Harris, but we need folks in the African-American community to be able to speak up for issues that are affecting our community. And there are certainly many. One of them that I want to talk about is the African-American Response Act. This act, I know you support it over years, but over the years, it hasn't been funded correctly. And so as an African-American male that knows that, unfortunately, we continue to see high rates of HIV in our community, um, funding that act, um, making sure that our, our Black-led organizations um, are receiving the funding needed to be able to get to zero by 2030 is something that I'm honored to have been supported along with uh, my friend, Senator Mike Simmons, who is the first in the Senate. And so the work continues, as Rocco mentioned, uh, and I'm just honored uh, to be a part of this great work and I appreciate your support. Thank you, Lamont. So there was a major development this past week when NFL player Carl, Nays how do you say his name? Nasip, I think it's Nasip. He came out in a very public way and he pledged, he pledged $100,000 to a project that works to prevent suicide among LGBTQ youth. How significant is something like this, particularly for young people? So I'd like um, whoever wants to jump in here, um, jump in. Well, if, if I may, uh, in the General Assembly, we have, we finally were able to get our history in schools across the state, right? Why is this important? It's important because um, racism, bigotry starts at home. Oh, and yeah. if our kids learn about history, right, if they learn about LGBTQ history, if they learn about African American history and Asian history, we can stop that at the root. And so I'm happy that my colleagues supported the efforts to make sure that, again, LGBTQ history is going to be taught, Asian history is going to be taught, because I believe that will bring down the suicide rates that we're seeing in our kids that, unfortunately, coming up like me, were questioning um, their uh, sexuality and not feeling as though they could come out, not feeling as though they could be loved. Um, Madam Clerk, you mentioned in the community, there's still a stigma attack, particularly in our uh, in our uh, Christian community, so to speak. And so uh, I think the General Assembly is doing the right thing by making sure that our history is being able to talk, being able to be taught in our schools. That's number one. Marcelino, what do you think? Madam Clerk, I couldn't agree more. I think any small step is a big step on the long term, on the long run. It's, heck, I look back 20 years when I was a younger kid venturing into the professional world, and there were not that many people like me out there. Rocco's laughing because he knew me way back when. <laughs> but, uh, but I think anything that we can do to show that there's people like us, part of the community's role models, getting involved with community groups is something that will make people stronger and people not afraid. I think it's it's the power in the in uniting all of us together. So 
So, so um, uh, people of color certainly have all kinds of issues because of, you know, how we've been um, socialized and uh, brought up, you know, the way we've been brought up. So we, we kind of have closed ears and eyes to what we see and hear. And there's, there's a lot more work that needs to be done. And the school system certainly is the place to have these conversations. No question about that. Yeah. Madam Clerk, it's really, it, it's true. I, I, I'm originally from Puerto Rico. And part of the reason of why I ended up in Chicago is because here I could be me. If I was back home, people kind of know who you are. So you, you have to portray certain things that you have to hide. But I, I've been grateful that my family has been supportive and my overall family here in, in Chicago, my community has been supportive too. So I can be who I am here and slowly um, break some barriers. But yeah, I, I, I completely understand what you're saying, and it's true. So, Rocco, you know, we've come a long way since the Stonewall Riots of right. 1969. Now, that yeah. was a major turn. I wasn't there, there, by the way. <laughs> you weren't? You said you were a dinosaur. <laughs> Not in 1969. No, I wasn't. <laughs> okay, but anyway, this was a major turning point for uh, J, uh, uh, LGB rights in our nation, and it much was, yeah. has been accomplished. Yeah. I know there's more work ahead, but what do you see um, as the greatest challenges to equality now? Well, I, you know, back to what you, the question you just asked before, I think what's so uh, awesome about what um, the NFL player played, and I can't pronounce his name either, or what he did, <laughs> was to, uh, just to show people that he's there. And what also was very cool about it was that he's the first active player in the NFL. So it wasn't after leaving that he came out. Yeah. And I think the more that, uh, and I think we see this in young people anyways, young people are the least discriminatory out of, uh, out of any subset of our, of our society uh, towards LGBT people. So that's a, a, an amazing thing. And I, the more that happens, the more we understand each other. I'm a firm believer in that. But I think that probably looking forward, um, it'll be a great thing to see that happening more and more in places where it's not very typical. Um, it'll be, um, it'll always, it, it tells young people that I can be who I am and do anything, just like every other child is told they can do anything. Any other LGBT kid can do whatever they want to do. But I think when we look forward to what we can uh, what we can be doing and what we can um, um, be defending is probably the most important thing. And that is um, defending what the rights that we have won so far. So we live in an awesome state that uh, people like Representative Robinson are there and they're actively representing us and, and they're protecting our laws and they're but we, I think what we did find, and not to be political, but what we did find over the last four years, five years, was that things can flip pretty quickly if we aren't aware of it. Right. Um, that if we don't have a, a judiciary that has people like um, Jill Rose in it, that that these are, if we, things can happen very quickly and things can unravel quickly. And so I think that will be our most important efforts moving forward are to defend the things and be keeping a very strong, watchful eye on what's happening to laws around the country and what's happening in our society. Uh, we can't let things go backwards. Agreed, and certainly um, as a former legislator, I know that those kinds of things can happen. You can pass a bill right. uh, into law and um, it'll be on the books, but the you know to um, implement it is the big deal, and then you know they'll come along a general assembly that uh, maybe doesn't feel the way that particular general assembly feel felt, and then they'll overturn it. And I know that firsthandedly um, when I passed the uh, abolition of the death penalty. Um, the very uh, as soon as I passed that bill, um, the first thing that happened was one of my uh, former colleagues on the other side of the aisle um, had a bill on the floor to, um, you know, overturn it. I mean, in the same right. session, go figure. Right. Right. So right. I know that you have to protect what you have, and we have to make sure we send people to these different legislative bodies to make sure that we keep what we have and then we continue to build on it. 
Um, I had never heard of the Stonewall in riots until probably maybe about five years ago. And when I saw the uh, movie on, um, right. um, yeah, when I saw yeah. the movie, I was blown away. Yeah, like, yeah. So, and I was there, by the way. You know? <laughs> so, you know, but I didn't know this, this history. I didn't know this had happened. And so I wanted to know more about what happened there. And I, anyways, listen, we don't want to go back to that time, right? Well, and, and what's What's awesome about what we're doing this month, it's happening, the reason June is is Gay Pride Month, LGBT Pride Month, is because of what happened at Stonewall. It started in that, at that time, at that place. And, um, and again, a lot of what happened there was happening in places all around the country, including Chicago. Um, when you see photographs of the first L, uh, Gay Pride March in, in Chicago, it's it's amazing. It's, you know, like 20 people walking down the street, you know, with, with signs, you know, and, and people thinking they were weirdos and, and to think of what it is now and to think what pride month is now and to see companies like in fully embracing because it's, it's good corporate policy to be accepting of LGBT people. It's amazing. It's an amazing thing. And, and um, but what we do know is that laws can go backwards, as you just said. People can uh, get their eyes off the prize and and let things happen that um, or things happen because you have the wrong elected officials there, and you you have to be vigilant about that. That's that's our responsibility, and it's not as exciting as passing things for the first time, but it is what has to happen. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So um, Lamont in the house, uh, Marcelino is of course a water wreck, and so I want to hear. Um, oh, and and, and uh, Rocco, you're at the um, Secretary of State's office. So tell me, um, what are your respective agencies or departments doing to advance the causes and aid the struggles of the LGBTQ communities? Can I, can I go, Madam yeah. Clerk? Yes. Well, hey, I'm, I'm very proud that the MWRD is a progressive institution. Three years ago, we raised the pride flag. This year, we raised it in all our um, facilities. Um, last year, we were um, happy to pass a uh, resolution which will call for the development of the LGBT certification, business practices certification. Wow. So for the next two or three years, we're going to be collecting data um, and we're working with the chamber and other institutions to ensure that we are able to build LGBT, LGBT businesses up so that they can be competitive and apply for contracts the same way as minority uh, women, um, small businesses. Um, I'm a firm believer that economics helps communities so we need to make sure that our co companies are strong and that they have access to the workplace. So we're, I'm proud of my colleagues for working with me and Commissioner Deborah Shore together to pass this resolution, which will come, become an ordinance in the near future when the disparity study happens. Yes. So, so, so yeah. Judge Quinn, you're on the bench. That's pretty important, um, you being there. Um, what do you what do you think? What, are, what, do, what do you see? Um, is there anything happening on, on the bench with other um, uh, judges or uh, judicial candidates? Um, uh, are there judicial candidates that are breathing a sigh of relief that, oh my goodness, finally, we have uh, Jill on the bench, so maybe it won't be so hard for me. Have you had any conversations with uh, people about so, that? So um, there's a couple things uh, to, to tell you. When I was campaigning, I had, I would naturally be as meeting as many people as possible, and I would meet a lot of judges uh, on the campaign trail. And a lot of those, uh, several of those judges came up to me and said, we are so glad you're going to be on the bench. And then they would describe to me how they had trans people, non-binary people in their courtroom, and they didn't, um, you know, they, they wanted to make those people feel welcome, and they didn't know how to do that. And I suggested to them that, they start their calls by giving out their pronouns and inviting people to say, let me know what pronouns you want to use. So that's the first thing I did when I get on the bench. I waited a couple of weeks just to make sure I was, I was going to stick. But I, I did decide I would, I would start out my call every day by saying my pronouns are, are she, her, and hers. 
please feel free to tell me what kind, what pronouns you want me to use when I address you. Your names and your identities are very important to me. Uh, so please correct me if I misgender you or if I mispronounce your name. Um, so I told those judges to say that. Maybe they're, they're doing that. This year, um, uh, every year, judges have to go uh, for continuing legal education. Uh, next year in 2022, for the first year, we will have uh, an education course on transgender uh, people, how to assist them in court, how to address them in court, uh, how we can make the court uh, court better uh, for transgender people. So that's that's coming up as well. Um, I've become the, uh, I, I was sworn in last night as the Secretary of the Alliance of Illinois Judges, which wow. is an organization, organization of uh, gay judges, gay, lesbian, uh, now transgender judges, uh, and, uh, and their allies. And that organization uh, pushes forward for, uh, for the, the rights uh, of all transgender, all LGBTQ people, uh, and, and to make the court a friendlier place. Um, I want to just go back, if I could, um, to, to the, the previous question, and I just want to mention something about suicide. Um, I, trans kids, 80% of trans kids um, have contemplated suicide. There's lots of trans kids who commit suicide. Wow. It's got to be the loneliest thing that you can do. And, I, and I'm really grateful that, that uh, this athlete has contributed something to, to help in that and to, and to, to help combat suicide because there's, there's, there's really no more wasteful or, or no sad, sadder act. One thing that, that helps LGBTQ people is our visibility and, and our standing up every day and saying, we're people, we're good people. Um, you, need, you, know, you need role models. Um, you know, look to us, look to other people. Um, so uh, that's the kind of things I try to do in my courtroom. Uh, that's the kind of thing that, that the judiciary is striving to do. I know there, there will be uh, movements to making language and court documents more uh, gender accessible as well. You know, more uh, she, her, uh, his, uh, ex, if you don't want to say what you, what you are or how you identify. Uh, and, I, and I know that the courts are beginning to be more sensitive to all of that. Great. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so I want to go to a, another topic. We only have a few more minutes, and Mar uh, Marcelino said that he was going to have to leave. But I want all of you um, to uh, respond to this because it's a, it's a serious issue. I mean, we're, we're struggling with violence um, all across the country quite frankly. I listened to the president this morning and um, talking about the different, um, you know, what's going on in different states and the different cities as it relates to gun violence. But the another kind of violence that goes on um, against the transgender community, I mean, and it's a serious problem, not just in Illinois, but in, across the nation, particularly African-American transgender indiv individuals. How, what, what can we do? How, what, how can we work to prevent this? And, my, and I think I'd like to go with um, Lamont. Um, can you start us off? And then Marcelino, I don't want you to leave before you uh, answer this or give me your thoughts on violence against the transgender community. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Clark. That's a great question. Uh, I think that at the basis, at the, at the basic level, um, when we are amongst our friends and family and we hear comments that are inappropriate towards the LGBTQ community, we have to make sure that it stops. We have to nip it in the bud. Uh, that is the first way that we can start to support the, uh, the trans community, overall the LGBT community, we hear jokes and things all the time, whether that be someone inside the LGBT community or an ally. And so, Madam Clerk, I think that we really need to nip a lot of this foolishness in the, in the, in the, in, in the butt, so to speak, uh, first and foremost. I think that's a first step. Uh, secondly, 
Uh, it is to continue to work with organizations and support organizations like Brave Space Alliance. That is a trans organization here in Chicago that that uh, does housing for our, our trans brothers and sisters. Uh, they have job training. And so really, we need to support our organizations that are on the ground doing the work. I think that those two small things, Madam Clerk, are ways that we can stem off the violence that we're seeing. I think thirdly, we need to spend more money at the county, at the city, at the state, and then federally as it relates to mental health. Uh, I mm -hmm. think things that we're seeing around violence in general are around mental health and making sure that uh, that that folks know that that our uh, trans brothers and sisters are supported. So those are just three basic ways, Madam Clerk, that we can support this community and stem some of the violence that we're seeing towards our trans brothers and sisters. Oh, great points, great points. Um, Marcelino, so Lino, what do you think? How, what do we need to do? And by the way, uh, Lamont, you're right. Uh, you know, um, there's a little saying, if you see something, say something. Um, I, I'd like to say, if you hear something, shut it down, you know, because if you stand up and be a man or a woman and say, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear that. Don't talk to me about that. Once people get shut down when they do that, then, then a person won't feel so free and so open to make comments like they do. You know, I, I can liken it to being an African American. You know, um, people will say when they when they're around <coughs> their white friends, they may have a certain conversation, but but when they get around black people, they have that conversation like that. But that they may say some things that they would never say in my presence. And but but if you have white skin yeah. privilege. If you have white skin privilege, you can shut that down. So what do you think, Marceline? You know? I, uh, Madam Clerk, I can't agree more. It's, uh, I think, Representative Robinson hit it in the nail. You know, it's, it's about a lot of different things coming together. I, I think it's the education and the conscientization of people. I think our younger, our, our younger people are more open to it. Um, as Rocco said, it's like, look back 20 years ago there were not that many lgbt's in the open right now we're seeing way more many uh people of trans um upper, uh area out there uh, judge quinn is is uh is an example it's like we're seeing it in the media so i think it's it's becoming a little bit more um open and accepting and i think people have to look inside and always remember treat others how you want to be treated um it, it goes a long way being nice being being caring um it's just general um part of society so i i i hope that people will want to look inside and share the love with others and not be hateful towards others and I, as, as there's more trans people open i'm sure that every family out there will say hey 20 years ago it was rare to have a lgbt member in their family now it's common um in a couple of years from now i'm sure everyone will say i know a trans person and i will be supportive of that person in their quest of for the world and to be happy it, it, it's it will take a little bit of time but hopefully that doesn't negate the fact that violence should never happen towards anyone regardless of who you are Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Now I want to talk to the dinosaur. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Rocco, you should have never said that in, the I know, in this I know. conversation because if you weren't there in 1969, you're not a dinosaur. <laughs> um, so Rocco, I was alive in 1969. <laughs> I just wasn't. It's, Rocco, it's you've gone. been a lot of places. I mean, you've served in a number of areas. You know a lot of people. I mean, it's almost like Everybody knows Rocco Claps, and what do they know about him? They, it's not that they know that you're gay either. They know that you're, oh my goodness, you're a professional. They know that you've run agencies, statewide agencies. You've been 
I mean, you've been everywhere and you've done so many things in government and in the community. Um, when, when I first met you, I didn't know you were gay. All I knew is the, the reputation that you had before I even came to the General Assembly was, oh, this guy, first, he's one of the nicest people you ever meet, and he's over human rights, and he's doing a hell of a job. That's what I was told about you. They didn't tell me that you were gay. And, and where does that fit into things anyway? Why, 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 why would somebody, nobody ever told me that, okay? Yeah. Well, um, you know, I think it relates to everything everyone's been saying. It's, I think one of the, uh, I have a really good friend whose um, who's, uh, niece was born uh, male and is living as, uh, from age five or six, is living now as, a girl. She is the most loved child. She has a huge structure, family, an extended family that's supporting her, um, that is uh, nurturing her. She has a million friends. She's a popular little girl and everybody loves her. And I, what I love about that is that it's, first of all, it's amazing even to me because I'm a dinosaur that I see this happening in a school that a trans child is completely nourished and welcomed and loved in a very accepting way. But what we don't remember or what we don't think about, we may think about the immediate family. We don't think of all the families of the kids that go to that school with this little girl and how much now they have a totally different perspective of what it means to be transgender in the family unit, you know? And I think what, um, what I always like doing, and my, I had some relatives that used to say to me when I was at Human Rights, they'd say, why do you always introduce yourself as the first director of a state agency who's openly gay? Well, you don't have to do that. I wanted to do that because it meant that um, <clears throat> people heard that and people see that. And they're not, and they're not wondering if I am or not, or whether, you know, like maybe you did when you met me, but it's like, it was, we're out there and maybe you'll have a, a, if I represent myself well as a human being, maybe I'll represent our community well as well. So I think those examples, um, and I think this is so important for the trans community right now, we're seeing it happening. Um, we're seeing people with so much more understanding right now. It's only gonna get better, I believe. I think the violence will uh, continue until it becomes more and more agreed that that kind of action isn't isn't take place in our society at all. I I think it's really important for especially this group here and anybody that's watching this call that you know say who you are, be who you are, um, be nice to other people, and uh, we represent ourselves well, and people will know us that way, you know. And so I I'm um, that's always been how I've seen it. So I think right on, Marco. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Great. Well, well, you know, I'm I'm a member of um, you know a a club, the Rotary Club, and our uh, motto is service above self, and that's the reason why I am in uh, as a member of this club. But more than that, um, that's how I see myself. I think that um, uh, we have an obligation to. Um, you know, do some good while you're here. Um, when you're in a particular place, make it better than you left it and uh, share the good things. Uh, you know, we have something we say every week and, and it's our four-way test. Number one, is it the truth? Secondly, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And finally, fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? I live by that motto, and I just figure if other people just gave it a try to live, think about, you know, first of all, is it the truth? You know, so I know, you know, we've got this 24-hour news cycle going on, and there's all kinds of stuff you are be. There's a barrage of information that probably, in many cases, just simply not the truth. And certainly, if it's not the truth, it's certainly not fair to all concerned. But I think this conversation that we have had today, um, you know, kind of relates to all of that. And I think that if we get people's attention on how do you want to be treated, 
I mean, regardless whether you're a man or a woman or trans or gay or whatever, whatever you are, why don't you look at me first as based on my actions, because they certainly speak louder than words, you know, and um, just just treat everybody the way we all want to be treated. And I think it'll go a long, long way. So we're going to wrap up now because Marcelino told me, he, are you, where are you anyway? You, it looks awfully nice there. <laughs> hey, it's, it's nice and summer. Want to be outside sharing uh, beautiful sceneries with everyone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so I want each one of you to leave uh, this audience with uh, a, a quote from you. Like I want a claps quote. And I want a Garcia quote. And um, certainly Judge Quinn has already done one. But yeah, I already started, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, and, and Okay, so all of you, give me a Robinson quote, um, a representative. Give me a Robinson quote on how we can be a part of the solution. You can be part of the solution uh, by living your best authentic life and loving everyone. Okay, there's your Robinson quote. Everybody write it down. Okay, how about Judge Quinn? You know, I was thinking, I, I don't want to be long-winded about this, but I heard a story about people who are in the forest, and maybe you being where you are, Marcelino, reminds me of this, but people in a forest, they don't look at trees and say, boy, that tree's kind of got a big nose. That tree's kind of... You know, got, you know, ooh, bad skin, ooh, terrible leaves. Uh, people look at a tree and they see a tree. Uh, I think we should see people by looking at their hearts and, and try to concentrate on that. Okay. So we got a Judge Quinn quote. Next. Rocco. Oh, me. Me? Yeah. Okay. Or is it Marcelino? I don't care. I'll, okay. I'll go. I'll, okay, go I'll ahead. Let the dinosaur go last, okay? I'll, <laughs> I'm simple. Be supportive. Apoya. Do it in oh, no. any language. You know what? It's like remind, remind everyone that a lot of us here in Illinois come from different cultures. So be responsive to that. I love the fact that, Madam Clerk, you're like expanding language access. So say apoya. Well, be well. supportive. Yeah, right. 12. Yeah, 12 so saving languages. Mm -hmm. We did but that. There's only, wow. But, but you know what? There's only one language in the end, which is the loving, the love that we can, like, show others. So be supportive. Apoya todo el mundo. So right. that's my quote. Go. Okay, there's our Garcia quote. Okay, what about the claps quote? Oh, well, you know, I was uh, yesterday, I don't know if you saw on the news, um, the... Um, head of the Joint Chiefs, I think he was head of Joint Chiefs, was defending the West Point education process. Did you all see I didn't that? that. Um, it was really interesting because he said, you know, I can read, uh, I can read writings by Mao Zedong and I can read, it uh, doesn't mean I'm a communist. And he's like, and I can, he goes, and I can read about and study um, uh, white privilege and still, and I'm, I'm quote, I'm not really quoting him exactly, but um, I can read that, and he goes, and I'm white, and I and I don't fully understand it, so I just want to understand life, and that's that stuck with me, and I was like so proud of this guy because he's he's saying exactly what's right. If we can make room for each other uh, and try to understand each other, uh, I think all the other things that come with that um, will make a better world, you know. And so if we just make room for each other to be who they are and understand them. That doesn't mean we have to get into political discussions or fights or anything. It just means we can we can listen and hear what people are saying and thinking. So great. Okay. Is that okay? That's 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 great. That's a great Rocco Claps quote. All right. I so got listen, it. let me thank all of you for taking out this bit of time in your life. You're never going to get it back. But I think the conversation that we've had today maybe enlighten someone somewhere somehow so that they understand better better than 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 they did before today um in the chat um i see uh, betty torres says love it is love is love nice betty very nice 
Uh, Armanda Killingham says uh, African Americans in general are not homophobic. Homophobia it exists in all groups of people. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Um, so with that, my friends, thank you for your time today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your quote. And I look forward to continue work to push this big ball up this hill. We still have much work to do. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.